Now, um, I'm going to go into a little bit of case studies, right, to, to see what you've described and see how uh, that maybe, of course, you didn't start out uh, dividend investing, but so happened you found out that the companies you picked based on your process were also good dividend stocks, right? What are some of the case studies that you can share with us that have, uh, you would say that have done well based on quality and dividends? The one, the one company I I have uh, used as sample quite a bit in the new book yep. is FPI la, mm. uh, In fact, a lot of these Taiwanese companies uh, they they good give very good dividend yes, dividend yes. you. Uh. Uh, okay, case study for FPI. Uh, you look at. FPI. Before we begin the podcast, have you gotten your free ebook? It's called the Build a Six Figure Portfolio Guidebook. Now, inside it, we share with you the tips and tricks to bring your stock investing skills to the next level. The best part, it's only 10 pages long and it's totally free. Whether you're on Spotify or YouTube, the link to download is in the description or you can go to www firl.co slash f-r-e-e or www.firl.co slash free hello everyone welcome back to the fire podcast it's been a while so we today to as a return for this podcast uh, we have a very very special guest in fact i'm not sure if you know casey that you are our most viewed on youtube your video five figure views oh, yeah. okay yeah. good yeah, I know. Uh, I know you. You, you came back everyone. from uh, from uh, New Zealand, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just want to get an update since the last time we met. We met uh, on through online, I think, about more than a year ago. So I just want to get an update. How's how's things on your side? Oh, it's good. Everything is good. Uh, uh, you know, because of COVID nineteen, uh, mm-hmm. I think I was. Uh, Jail in uh, New Zealand really? uh, for two years. <laughs> two years you can't can't get out of the country. Uh. Uh, I went there in uh, I think two o two two o two o July. Right. Then uh, I only managed to come back two years later. Right. So two years. Uh, yeah, I I've been uh, in Auckland. Uh, you know. Right play quite a lot of golf and then you know do my usual thing la, huh? yeah, yeah 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 i mean you you uh managed to write a book even right yeah in, in fact when i was the two years there i i actually i i wrote my second book uh, ah. uh the 20 lessons uh, uh mm-hmm, 20 mm-hmm. lessons uh. my first book was before that uh, that is the the complete value investing, investing guide right guide that works my second book was uh you know based on uh the sale of the book, uh, you know, those uh, readers, they ask me questions because during the, in the sale, uh, I promise any, readers can ask me any questions. Uh. Right. So with, with that, I, a lot of questions. So uh, I compiled the questions. Actually, I wrote another book, uh, answering to the questions. Uh. Right. Yeah. Well, then uh, just before I came back, I have some time, I started my third book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How, how I mean, what were the memorable questions that you have? What we thought were very good questions for your second book? Oh yeah, you see the 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 the, the very common questions that you know, uh, what, how 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 would the would there be a recession? Would there ah, be a great depression? Okay. Uh, because the COVID nineteen, uh, the yep. peak of COVID nineteen was the March two o two o. So at that time. After that, you know, they, they actually dragged quite long. Uh, uh, our country, we have MCO for a long time. Many, many Way times. into 2021, yeah, July, correct. August, you know. So they, before there were a lot of questions about the macro kind of things, I know. Right. Would that be a depression, you know? Uh, how how bad will, will it be? Shall we invest, you know? Uh, so will we have a, re- a recession? What was your, what was your response? Oh, the, the, actually, the uh, as you know, the recovery was actually a V shape, you know? Yeah. Uh, March, somewhere March twentieth was the worst uh, for the stock market. Uh. then I think after 
two three months, uh, you know, there was a V-shaped recovery. Yeah, uh. in mm-hmm. fact, in fact, uh, to my surprise, uh, 2020, the year of COVID nineteen, was a one of the best years yes. on the return of uh, yes, agree yeah, on the investment. You see, so there was a there was a common question on what to do. Uh, uh, but actually, during that time, a lot of people are very fearful. Uh, if, if you listen to uh, podcast, y- yep. watch YouTube. Uh, most yep. most people will talk about ah, oh, you you better get out from the stock market. You know, uh, it's all all gloom and doom. You see, right? But uh, as you know, actually the the, the market recover very fast. Let's show something like you know, market is very unpredictable. Yeah, uh, there a lot of uncertainties. You think it be like that, but there are so many factors. You know, right? Uh, it will surprise you most of the time. <clears throat> but at that point in time, when you were writing, the V shape recovery haven't happened yet, right? Uh, that was the. Does it happen already? First book, is it? The second so book second where you book, compile no, the not, questions. Not, not yet, not yet, so yeah. what was your response to someone like okay, like similarly now, right? Uh, it's in a bit of a downturn globally. Mm. Uh, what would you say to the question? Is, is there it, a recession? I I always I always have this uh, thinking, you know. I I. Really, you know, macro kind of thing is is very difficult to predict. Uh. I I don't really spend much time on it. Right. I I read I do read a lot of uh, reports, like, You know, uh, you know, outlook or what is things. Uh, but I don't pay too much attention uh, because, uh, from my experience, uh, I have been in the market for a long time, uh, and also from reading a lot of books. Uh, 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 it shows that the the market is very unpredictable. You know, mm-hmm. are, you know, in this in this world, there are so many very reputable economists. Uh, yeah. But surprisingly, fifty percent will say this. The other fifty yeah. percent, they're totally opposite. So who, who are you going to believe? Yeah. That's uh, why there's a famous joke, right? They say that uh, one of the favorite phrases for economists is "on the other hand." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why my 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 thinking is always. You know, anybody ask me, in fact, I will say. In fact, that that. That yeah. questions you ask me actually it forms one of the major part of my second book uh, Should I invest or not? How bad is it? I always say no, I don't know. But the very important thing, survival is the mm. most important thing. Okay, right. If you cannot survive, you you don't invest. Uh, don't go and uh, take all your saving and go and uh, dump inside it. Uh, don't right. borrow money uh, for your parents or from the banks margin and 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 and. Uh, Especially Dumb margin or yeah. like loans and all that, right? Yeah, Is margin it? finance, that kind of things. Uh. But if you have excess money, you still got a job, you got excess money, and you are not heavily in the market, you sh- you should at that time. That was yeah. my, my what I'm thinking. Uh, uh. So I always have this uh, belief la, you should be invested right. most of the time in the market. Of course, there are times when market went into euphoria uh, to the market, the whole market is so high, then maybe hey, the time to get out, uh, maybe not right. completely, but uh, can get out most of your capital. Uh. What, what are your signs? Because like, like euphoria is a, is, is, is a real word, but it's not something you can measure, right? So yeah. what are some of your indicators when you look at the market that there's euphoria? Well, you you can see like you know when the you know the say the overall market PE ratio is uh, right is uh, way above the the norm. Yeah? Right. When uh, you know in two o two one second half of two o two one you find that a lot of uh, high growth stock with high growth expectation uh, uh, went up sky high. Uh, yeah. Just based on a lot of them are uh, without. Without earnings, uh, mm-hmm. but with sales, uh, so the the valuation is based on price to sale, and the price to sale go up to hundred hundred plus. Uh, maybe that you should pay some attention. I uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I always say valuation matters. Uh, so yeah. actually, valuation the kind of things. Uh, I know uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, investor, even savvy investor, they think. Uh, you know, you go into high growth stock, so much prospect, so much runway for its growth. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, no need to look at valuation. But to me, I, I'm i more a conservative investor. Right, right. So right. valuation does matter to me. Yeah. How much you pay, like I've heard it before, how mu- the, the you you profit not when you sell, you profit when you buy. 
because the price at which you buy it at will determine how much money you will make because of the valuation. Does that does that make sense? To no, you? valuation is is not how much you buy, how much you sell. Right, right. It's what is based on what what earnings are like mm-hmm. like how much the company earn, uh, how much yep. the company earn in earning or cash flow. Uh, what what is the price now? Uh? So mm-hmm. you 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 compare like, if the price the price to say PE, it is a very, very a simple example. Uh, looking at PE, the PE ratio is a. Uh, for uh, you know a normal company uh, 30 40 maybe it's high you know uh, compared with historical of uh, 15 20 right mm-hmm. but on the other hand if a high growth company uh, pe ratio of 30 doesn't mean it's high is it right yeah. uh, it depends on the growth uh, if the company has a lot of moat in it and a lot of growth, growth potential then pe of 30 is actually nothing nothing right you know? right uh, because it, actually you can actually uh, put up your model uh, you 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 put out your forecast. And what is your what is your expected growth? You know, huh? then you can, yeah, you can sort of like discount back. You know how much the the, oh, yeah. the stock value. You know, huh? very rough estimation. Uh, w- you know? Would you like in terms of the P ratio? You mentioned just now a very good point, which is uh, just because it's thirty doesn't mean it's undervalued or overvalued. Yeah, you have to no, see no, it in all. context, right? Yeah. So how do you usually compare it? Do you compare it with like the past valuations of that stock or do you compare it with other players similar in the industry do you compare it with the klci or the s p 500 yeah it's best to compare with a few benchmarks uh, mm-hmm. uh, of course the closest comparison is your peers uh, the peers of the company uh, just take example like uh, say a ems ems uh, company right. like skp resources right uh, its closest peer will be vs Right, mm-hmm. yes. Last time maybe AT, yeah, ATA, correct. IMS, you know. So you compare the valuation. Uh, I mean, valuation is one thing. Also, you could compare the performance. Uh, right, uh, right, right. Quality, and the quality of the business. Uh, yeah. The quality and then uh, compare the valuation. Right. That is one. The other thing, important one also, you should compare with the historical. Uh, mm. If, say, for example, a company historical P ratio is 10, now, now it's 15. Uh, then yes. probably you consider it's high, you know, right? Uh, or if the historical is uh, 30, now it's 10. No? Well, it's very good, yeah, a very yeah. good bargain, you see. Right. Uh, so historical peers, uh, maybe the overall market. Yeah. So Do, do you think to account things like uh, interest rates? Because uh, I listen to Warren Buffett quite a lot and he said that the valuation threshold you, mm. you give yourself should mm. be based on uh, what is the risk-free rate, right? So whether it's the interest rate, the government bonds, or whatever you want to yeah. use, yeah, sure, if it sure. goes up, it means that your valuation needs to be more strict. Is that right? The right thinking? Yeah, sure, sure. In fact, if you look at my first book, I did yeah. discuss about discount cash flow quite quite a bit, uh, Even in sec- my second book, I know I know a lot of very good investors. Then don't believe in a lot of my friends who are mm. actually very good investor they say hey, that's nonsense no but i i do pay attention to it so in discount cash flow is you have a projection of future cash flow uh then you discount back uh. the discount right. rate will be based on you know how much is the risk fee rate uh, that will be a government uh, government security uh, then you you add premium to it based on uh, the business correct company, the risk and all that the, yeah the what they call the earning visibility, you know, based on all this, you you add a you add a premium to it. So the base is risk fees rate, uh, right. or or corporate bond rate or whatever uh, Yeah, you, you start with it, then you build up your your premium and kind of, kind of discount rate. So if, if there's inflation, there's high interest environment, then then the the base rate will be the intrinsic va- the intrinsic value will drop. Uh, yeah, definitely, calculation. definitely, it can drop quite a lot. You know, if if your that's one one bad thing about discount cash flow. So if your discount rate is uh, higher by one or two percent, your present value will be much much less. Uh, it yeah, can yeah. be even half, you know. Let alone the yeah. terminal growth yeah. rate and all that yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 So yes, it? yes, in inflation, interest rate do affect. Uh, but in my opinion, this this the the the, the effect of this are. Uh, Mostly initially, la, beginning, uh, uh, but in the long term, uh, I don't really think so because you know things will become more expensive. Uh, your this, your services, uh, yeah. your products will go up in price, you know, and 
you know, yeah, la, but I don't know, just simply say that la, because I also have read some books uh, on high interest rate environment. Does it really adversely affect the stock market that badly? Not necessary, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the books I remember was from Kenneth Fisher. Uh, he talked he talk about uh, interest rate. Uh, actually, in the past, uh, when interest rate were higher, actually the stock market was good, you know. But, but I believe that is later part like initial initial part because of this fear these kind of things are uh, uh, the market come down just like just like Day recently like, yeah. the last few months uh, actually you look at US market actually drop quite a lot you know right? uh, that is because of rise, rise interest rate uh. but over the long term according to what statistic shown uh, by this right. Janet Fisher uh, right. it's not necessary that the market will go down in fact it, most of the time market actually went up in this few Fisher's uh Sun, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Like, uh, <coughs> the famous uh, yeah, yeah. Un- uncommon stocks and common stocks and uncommon profits. Yeah, his book, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. So you know, you talk about the US, and I remember our last chat. You were you were looking at US stocks. Where are you putting your your money today? I I am quite well diversified. I, I like this diversification. Okay. I think the last time you also talk about diversification. Right. Uh, yes. Me. Correct. Uh, diversification. Among stocks, uh, industry, sectors, not only that, uh, geofe- geographically, yeah. diversification is so important. Uh, right? uh, just like, actually, the, the, the market now are not really, not really very highly correlated now. No? Like for example, like, uh, in the past couple of years, uh, the Hong Kong market, I am in the Hong Kong market, so Hong Kong market actually went down quite a lot. Yes, but yes. US market Correct. shot, shot Correct. up, you know, Correct. Uh, recently dropped. Uh, and then uh, Malaysian market, also, like beginning of the year, it, it, it dropped also, but not as bad as US yeah, market. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, it's good to diversify, lah. So, I for me, I I have uh, I'm invested quite equally, lah, in US, right, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah I, I I'll talk about Singapore a little bit later on because I know in your book, you your new upcoming book, you will talk a little bit. So we'll give a teaser of what yeah. people can expect okay. from the book. But um, one, one trend I want to get your thoughts is this, uh, there's this trend right now, especially in the younger generation, so maybe those under 30, they sort of like give up hope or they don't see the KLCI or Busan Malaysia as uh, exciting and all that. Is that, um, what would you say to them, right? To not lose hope or to do whatever they want or yeah, they should be getting out. You know, they're right to say that Busan Malaysia is not interesting. At all. And I want to get your thoughts because I know a lot of your uh, quote unquote notoriety comes from the fact that you are always on I you were always on I3 sharing your thoughts about Malaysian companies and all that. Yeah, talking about Malaysian market. Lah. Yes, because a lot of young people feel like uh, you know, after the glove craze and then a lot of that got burned. Yeah. So they don't want to invest anymore in Busa Malaysia. My personal opinion, uh, uh, you see, uh, young people should invest where the growth is, right? You can, especially young people, you can compound your 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 wealth by, you know, investing in growth company when it compound fast. Yeah, uh, I I see not much opportunity here. I mean, in comparison with overseas, of course. Uh, you, you just look at the. U.S. Uh, or even Hong Kong, uh, you see, in U.S. there are so many because it's a free society, you know, uh, a capitalist society. Uh, uh, the potential of uh, high growth companies uh, in in U.S. a lot more. There's a lot more. Uh. So I I would advocate uh, uh, look further. Uh, look further. Really. Uh, look. West, you know, uh, because Malaysia is a. I mean, there are still opportunities. Uh, I I am still quite quite uh, heavily in Malaysia. Also, uh, if you invest in the right companies, you know, then you you can still make good return. Uh, but the the is the 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 kind of uh, multi bankers type of companies. Uh, the kind of business. Uh, uh, is more in. The US lah, yeah, yeah. Hong Kong, there are a lot also uh, because of the Chinese companies. Uh, but 
nowadays I a bit wary about Hong Kong. Ah, uh, maybe maybe uh, yeah, because, maybe share share with us why why that. Yeah, the case. because you see, uh, there are a lot of interference uh, from the, mm. the central government. Uh. Uh, I don't know uh, You you look at you know uh, actually like a company like Alibaba, Tencent. These are actually very good companies now. Uh, uh, given them the the what uh, the opportunity they can grow grow very very fast and to a high level is it but because of a lot of this interference uh, yeah you you can't even make make comments uh, on the government you know <laughs> you make right. some comment comment they don't like it you know they just they just you know uh, penalize you penalize your company uh, i think that's not very good uh, very good uh, of course china being a big country a lot of a lot of people and also a second biggest economy in the world uh, and probably going to surpass us in the future there's still a lot of opportunities uh, but be you have to be very careful uh, you invest mm. in china hong kong uh, uh, because they are a bit of opaque kind of yeah. thing uh, not transparent uh, yeah will you suggest people who want to invest in china to go for maybe the smaller caps where the attention from the government is not so big so like tencent alibaba yeah in fact in fact in hong kong uh, i've been investing in the the lower lower mm. tiers kind of companies right. uh, i i do have uh, i do have alibaba alibaba tencent jd dot com but uh, uh, initially actually initially I, i invest in those smaller companies actually the return very good uh, really yeah. uh, very good but Small companies have to be more careful, lah. Huh? Uh, I think the the transparency is still not there, lah. Huh? Right. Not not, not very. Uh, also, uh, I mean, you know, lah. Uh, those chi- Chinese companies listed in Malaysia, Singapore, even in US, ah, uh, a, uh, yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of financial shenanigans, lah. Uh, uh, that you have to be very, very careful, very yeah. careful. Right, right, right. Yeah. So one one thing of that is not. So risky, or at least people perceive to be not so risky, is actually dividend uh, investing, right? And dividend investing is uh, going to be the main core, uh, the main topic of your next book. And um, you're not known to be a quote unquote dividend, or at least from my perspective, you're not known to be a dividend investor. Why, why the decision to go into dividend investing? Actually. You know, traditional investing, uh, uh, when you invest in company, or you, you start a company, uh, you, you expect, uh, you know, you, you have revenue, you've got income, and then you, you, you got, you got the, what do you call that, the distribution of your, your income. Uh, uh. So actually, that traditionally, you, when you invest in anything, you should think about you getting something back. Uh, yeah. uh, that is in the form of dividends. Uh. I don't, Yeah, I didn't talk much about dividend. I I did, you know. In fact, I, if you read my I three last time, lah, I mm. I start I stopped writing for a long time already. Recently, it's I started. It's writing good for again, your mental uh, health, uh, actually, to yeah, stop. Yeah, now now I start writing again, uh, uh, Previously, last time a few years ago, actually, I th- I wrote quite a number of articles on dividend, uh, dividend, uh, and uh, but actually, my investment uh, process, uh, Doesn't start from dividend investing. Like exactly. Start from exactly. Start from uh, you know investing in good companies. So how to look at good companies and then uh, then at a cheap price. Uh. But actually, I look back on all my investment when I when I start my investment thesis like that. Uh, good company growth, uh, cash flow, high cap, return of capital, and then valuation. You know the kind the kind thing. Uh. Then actually dividend come last lah. Uh. But I look back on on those my investment thesis. That actually, do well lah. Uh, those mm. companies uh, which I invested actually the dividend are uh, are good dividends, no very high dividend cap. You know, so it it came it came with that lah. Uh, you know, yeah. So actually, I believe, especially uh, you know, you know, I am a retired person. Uh, you know, uh, when you retire, you think of safer kind of investing lah. Uh, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Dividend is safe lah uh, because. You invest in those good dividend stocks, uh, you get regular dividend. Uh, right. So your 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 cost keep on going down with with the recept of the dividend. Is it? W- would you say that it, you know, when you write this book, is it for retirees, or do you think anyone, even younger people, can should learn about it? For those who need income, uh, mm-hmm. regular income, 
whether you're retiree, you retire definitely you need regular income. But if you are working, you need regular income to actually supplement your expenses, lah. Yeah. That that is also good. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually for for everybody, even for young people, uh, mm-hmm. uh, because if you invest in those uh, dividend payer, right? I mean dividend. How much dividend is paid, or what is dividend? It's just one thing, But right, if you right. invest in those dividend payer, which is growing, uh, mm-hmm. and then you reinvest your dividend bank, actually, again, you, you can get a very high right total return. Uh, yeah. ha, have you done the math? Because I know you're you're someone quite rare in the industry, at least from my point of view. That um, when you write about your investments, you you back it up with a lot of statistics and data. Yeah. So, the, g- give us a sense of if. I just buy and then collect the dividends versus I buy, collect dividends and reinvest. What kind of difference are we talking about in terms of the uh, gains? Uh, you see, this book uh, on dividend, uh, it's actually is a, every chapter is about dividend. Uh. Mm-hmm. Every chapter mm-hmm. is about mm-hmm. dividend. So one of the topic will be what is the evidence that dividend does investing, it work? Yeah. yeah why, it why, why? What does? Why? Why do you say it's work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are actually I have cited quite a number of uh, research research paper uh, uh, First of all, first thing you invest in high dividend yield. That's most people think. Ah, like, yes, invest yes, yes. In dividend high dividend yield. Okay. Yes. Uh, they they are papers which show that actually yes, you just invest in high dividend, you will get. Uh, Good, better return than the broad market, uh, but you must invest in a, a portfolio, a diversified portfolio, uh, So over the thirty stock, then then uh, some some will lose money, uh, some will make money, but overall you will do better than uh, than uh, yeah. uh, overall market. But it, they also research which I cited that uh, if you invest in good company, you reinvest, you get a dividend, you reinvest it. Over thirty years, four years, you get a lot more return. Uh, I think I I did mention about actually it's from the research. Uh, you talk about eighty-five times your return. Wow! Uh, Just because you, you reinvest, reinvest, reinvest <sighs> right? Of course, the other other research shows that you know you reinvest uh, high dividend yield, but look at the payout uh, payout ratio, pay low payout pay ratio, you do better. Mm-hmm. Also, research saying that you invest in high dividend yield stock, low payout ratio, and that growth, growing company like grow, growth in revenue, growth in income, uh, growth in dividend, you you get a lot more, uh, right. uh, return. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there, there are quite a number of papers. One so, whole chapter on so, research. So, so you look at all this data and all that, right? What uh, obviously there will be disagreements. Right in the report, some say this is better, some say that's better. But what are the what do they all say in common? What do they say that you know uh, are the key things to look out for when you're deciding to say this is a good dividend stock versus a bad dividend stock? Right? I know you talk about one, which is don't look at the dividend you only. Right? That's mm-hmm. just for example one. But what are the other things? Actually. Uh Dividend investing uh, for most people is just buy high dividend yield stock. That is the wrong concept. That is very uh, dangerous. There well. are quite a number of things. Uh, a number of things which yep. I think important. Uh, okay, number one is payout ratio, right? Okay. If the payout ratio, if company earns so much money, everything pay out, pay out to to invest to to uh, shareholder. Uh, there's nothing left for the company. Uh, you can't grow, go the 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 business. Uh. Mm. But of course, if your dividend yield is high every year, you you get. Ten percent return on your investment, that is very good also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just get ten percent. I risk free, care, almost risk free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not not risk free lah. Yeah. Dividend, that's not they can cut also. Uh, so, payout ratio. Yeah, uh, it's good. The company give dividend with a low payout ratio, but dividend yield still good enough lah. Huh? Uh, mm-hmm. Three percent, four percent, but very low payout ratio. Twenty percent, thirty percent. Right. Uh, because then the company can keep. Uh, retain earning uh, for for growth uh, expansion by other business or whatever uh. so pay ratio is important the other thing is uh, of course the business must grow uh, if the if the business doesn't grow uh, then definitely 
or, or worse, if the, your business is deteriorating, uh, you will not yeah. be able to pay the kind of dividend. Uh. If it doesn't grow, you 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 you, you will get the same dividend. Uh. Yep. Three percent, you know, whatever. Uh. Uh, growth in uh, revenue, growth in income, growth in dividend. Uh. Then the other thing important is that it must earn high return of capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't earn high return of capital, then you your don't capital have, intensive. Uh. Yeah, you don't have you don't have the the, in the later you won't have the kind of uh, yeah. money to pay dividend uh, 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 that is it uh, uh, return of capital uh, growth payout ratio the other thing I think most people don't talk about is uh, cash flow right? uh. Uh, most people think that dividend is paid from earning right? no. uh, that's why they use payout ratio uh, payout ratio based on earning uh, but actually dividend it's not pay out from earning because earning is accounting. It's not not cash out. Right? It's, it's, it's just an accounting number. Dividend actually is paid out from free cash flow. Uh, yes. That means the yes. you the business you earn cash inflow outflow your net inflow that is your cash. Yeah. But you have to spend money for for growth of your maintenance company. and maintenance, all that. Maintenance yeah. capex. Uh, grow capex. Yeah. So after spending that, you have the free cash flow. Yeah. Uh, I always emphasize this concept of free cash flow. Uh, uh, in this respect, dividend is paid from free cash flow. Right. Only from free cash flow you pay dividend. Of course, other purpose of free cash flow is you, the company can invest in other kind of business or pay down the loan and other kind of things. Uh, a few things. Uh, uh. So, important, free cash flow. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the chapter I talk about is which I emphasize on free cash flow is that you can see some of the steel company uh, mm. They, mm. they earn quite good income, especially last year. And also last year they pay good dividend. They have very good dividend. But you look look at their their cash flow statement, actually there's no cash flow. Uh, there's no some of them don't even have positive cash flow from operation. No? That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Not to say, you know, you could spend money for capex, uh, then the free cash flow is very little or none, none. In fact, most steel company, uh, I don't know, it's about it's the industry itself. Uh, they hardly uh, have any free cash flow. Uh, when you talk about cash flow, we should talk about a few years, uh, Correct. over a number of years, uh, because cash flow very lumpy. Uh. Correct. Yeah. So that is, to me, uh, is, is also important. Uh. Right. Yeah. W- why do you think people don't pay enough attention to free cash flow? Is it just because of education or? Yeah, I think it's education. Education. Uh, uh, Maybe you should talk more about it. Yeah, very yeah, few yeah. people talk about cash yeah, flow. Yeah. As you see, I don't, I don't know. Very, very, very few people talk about cash, cash flow. Uh. Yeah. If you look at, the, you know, some of the education thing uh, in the, right. uh, I think very few. Uh. I don't know uh, most, most people think that it's difficult. It, it's a bit difficult uh, if your mind is not open. Yeah. Uh, you don't know why, why this po- this cash flow is positive. Why that one is negative? Yeah. Uh. A lot of people. A lot of people get confused. Uh, I, I forget about it. Like, forget <laughs> about it. But to me, that's important. Uh, the, the three three things are important. Uh, income statement, balance sheet, yeah, cash flow right. statement. Uh, uh, but cash flow is the the least yeah. uh, uh, people pay attention to. You know, um, just, to, just to really follow up on that, right? You mentioned something interesting just now, which is, you know, dividends can be cut. So that's very interesting because we know like, for example, during COVID, a um, lot of companies that used to pay a lot of dividends had to cut their dividends or so for good reason. But when, let's say, a company says they're going to cut dividends, right? What would your first few questions be? Before you decide to say, oh, they cut my dividend, I sell. Or do you say, no, let me see if there's other things at play. For me, I, I actually dividend is important, uh, but not, not the most important. A company cut dividend with reason, uh, like COVID nineteen at the time, uh, you know, business deteriorate, deteriorate, income less. Uh, some company they have done dividend policy based on, based on like thirty percent of uh, of net income. Uh, so they 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 just based on they cut because the the income earning drop. Income yeah. earning drop so. So the dividend drop la. but you you should look at the business la, right? Uh, okay, this year not good because of this this unusual kind of things uh, yeah. you know? But it has been doing all very well all the while. But this year is exception uh. So I I don't just because company cut dividend and uh, then I I'll get out la, Yeah. Uh, right. 
uh, but company cut dividend because you know the business, you know that in the future will will be bad, right? Right. Will deteriorate. Uh, so then, then, then you should get out. Yeah, yeah. Right. right? One area about so whenever you Google dividend investing, fortunately or unfortunately, the term that's always linked to dividend investing are REITs, yeah, REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. Now, what do you think of them as dividend vehicles? Because REITs tend to be you mentioned like growth just now, right? Um, that you look for growth and dividends. One of the issues with REITs is that it's not known for growth, right? Like if you buy a, a mall, right? That, that's it, right? How much can you grow? So what do you think of REITs as a part of someone's dividend investing portfolio? Will you recommend it or you won't? Uh, then I think we have to separate uh, Malaysian REITs, ah. uh, Singapore REITs. Okay, okay. <laughs> they they okay. are actually different. Uh, okay, okay. If you look at Malaysian, actually if you... I did have a chapter on REITs. Uh. I did mention about I don't like REITs. La. There, there are a lot of shortcomings about REITs. Okay. Mm-hmm. REITs are required by, by law yep. law that you can pay up 90% yep, of yep, your earnings. Yep. Uh. Uh, so they pay up high distributions, uh, uh, maybe 5% or that kind of thing. La. But like you said, there's, there's no growth. La. Uh, yeah, you typically. No growth, la, typically. Uh, I mean, access REIT is maybe yeah. a slightly different. But, yeah. but very often, they, they, they want to grow, they got to acquire. La. They acquire the uh, AUM will grow. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, when they acquire, you know what happened when they acquire an, uh, uh, the debt, uh, an uh. asset? Where do you get money? Right issue. <laughs> so eventually, uh, you, 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 you end up, uh, you actually pay more to the company for right issue, the kind of thing, than getting dividend from them. You see, right? uh, and then when they acquire, when they acquire something, uh, one strange thing is that the management they get a fee one, you know, they are paid a fee, you know, I don't know three percent or whatever huh? So actually, that will erode your return also, you know, mm. right? And also, there's some kind of conflict of interest also, you know. What the management because of the reward, you know, they will just go and acquire, like, you know, I got a of fee, course. I don't care, you know, right? Uh, so if you look at the REITs in Malaysia, overall they're not doing well, huh? The best one I can Exist, think of maybe is Axis yep. REITs, uh, which may be about 10% compounded, which is very good. Uh, very, very good. It's double uh, digits, yes. Yeah, they, they, they do well. Uh, it's Axis REITs. Maybe the other one is uh, Pavilion IGB. Mm-hmm, they are mm-hmm. doing quite okay. Uh, quite okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but the rest, uh, I think you will lose money. Uh. Some of them you will lose very yep. badly. Uh, in Malaysian, that's Malaysian REITs. Uh, but you look at Singapore REITs, Singapore, Singapore REITs, the industry is much bigger. Uh. They, they have REITs that uh, invest in everywhere in the world. Yeah. Uh. And you look at some of the return they have, uh, like Mabel, REITs, uh, all these things, uh, 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 may, uh, quite a number of them. Uh, actually, their the historic, historical return is very good, you know. Mm. Uh, and they, they invest in, uh, some of them invest in uh, some, some overseas, some new business like what data center or whatever. Uh. Like, actually, a lot, the, a lot, quite a number of them, the, the the return are very good, you know. Uh, right. Uh, uh, so for REITs, I think you're interested. Uh, Singapore REITs is one thing you should look at. Uh, right. Uh, right. Yeah. So, but then, uh, like, do you use the same process if you want to analyze a REIT as well with a uh, stock like you? You want to go for these uh, industries that are growing, um, run by good management, things like that. Would you say it's the same process? I I don't have risk at all. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I okay. never invest in the risk. I but if you were to, would you say the same thing as well? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. It is a process. Yeah. It should be the same, uh, Right. Look at right. the management. Look at the growth potential. The business, uh, right? Right. The business. Uh, the kind of risk. Risk. The very different kind of risk. Right. Yeah. Many many kind of uh, industry for risk. Yeah. Right. 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 So. Yeah, it should be the same. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure because I I also don't invest in REITs, so I just wanted yeah. to know what your thought process mm-hmm. is. Now, um, I'm gonna go into a little bit of case studies, right? To to see what you've described and see how, uh, that maybe of course you didn't start out uh, dividend investing, but so happened you found out that the companies you pick based on your process were also good dividend stocks, right? What are some of the case studies that you can share with us? 
that have uh, you would say that have done well based on quality and dividends? The one, the one company I I have uh, used as sample quite a bit in the new book yep. is FPI lah. Huh? Mm. Uh, in fact, a lot of these Taiwanese companies uh, they they good give very good dividend yes, dividend yes. yield. Uh. Uh, okay, case study for FPI. Uh, you look at FPI. I mean, last time uh, years ago they were just doing conventional speakers uh. The business actually going down. Uh. Only about a few years ago they start to. Have those, uh, you know, those uh, digital uh, earphone, uh, yep. and then they they went into uh, this uh, uh, musical instruments. Uh. Then you can see, uh, I think about five years ago, you can see, you look at the revenue growth, uh, very high, going very fast, maybe thirty percent, forty percent, kega. The earning rose in tandem. Uh, Dividend also, right? Uh, you look at the dividend, uh, uh, say about five years ago, you probably get six cents per share. Uh. Uh, the last year was 20 cents. Uh. So the compounded growth, I thought I woke up before about 30 over percent. Uh, so business growing, right? Uh, revenue growth, net income growth, dividend growth. Then the business earning very high return of on equity, High return of invested capital, right? Cash flow, uh, very good cash flow. Uh. In fact, the cash flow is so good that every year they pay you uh, very good dividend, right? Yeah. After the dividend, uh, it's, you look at the balance sheet, uh, the net, the cash. I mean, FPI don't have any borrowing at all yep. uh, for so many years. You look at the cash and cash equivalent, uh, keep on building up. Even, even though they pay more dividends, right? Yeah, even though their dividend going up like that, uh, they cash in the balance sheet still going up, keep on going up you know i think probably it make up about maybe close to 40 percent 50 percent of the market cap market now. cap wow yeah, yeah. so with a, such a now it's still doing very well right? it's still growing but i mean that is the past the future we don't know la. in case you know if if say a big client you know they stop yeah they stop the business with the with them uh, then i mean just the a t a i m s yeah classic then you have problem but but the fact is that the management has been doing well. They manage the company well. Uh, the, the, the company is growing. Uh, and then the management reward shareholders with good dividend. Right? So it's still a good company to, to invest in. Uh, uh. Even though, say for example, like, you know, with the kind of cash in the balance sheet, uh, even though say in the next couple of years they don't earn as much, uh, they still can pay you 20 cents because they have maybe one more than one dollar in the balance sheet which they can still distribute as dividend if they don't earn from the ordinary ordinary business right you know? so is that that is an example right right, right. How, how do you find companies like that because right? i always wanted i always want to know from you know great investors such as yourself like how do you do you screen do you talk to people Previously, eh, previously, uh, actually, is you when I read about it, uh, you say like in uh, in uh, the Age magazine, uh, we talk about it, uh, or or in, in in the in the public forum, uh, when people say too good, then you go and go and uh, study about it, uh, you know. Uh, last time I have to pull out everything from Busa, you know, the financial statement, everything, uh, the annual report, read the annual report, uh, but then from the financial statement, you pull up everything, everything I do it by hand uh, uh, and then analyze it five years, 10 years, the kind of things. Uh. Now it's different. Actually, now I have this shortcut. Uh. Uh -huh. I, I, I am doing actually screening now uh, mm. using DIKR. I used to use uh, Guru, yeah. Guru Focus. Uh. Now I use DIKR, TIKR. And, and I, when I have a strategy like investing strategy, uh, dividend investing strategy, I'll screen for dividend stock. Uh. Uh, in Malaysia, Singapore, I put up my criteria. Then, poke everything come out. Then I download it. I I I manipulate it with my with my Excel. You know, and I then I can say rank the the stocks. Uh, you know, right. then I can go deeper into it lah. Uh, or which company? You know, then I go further study on that lah. Uh. Right. Uh, that's what I can do now. In fact, this is actually very good now. No, because when I when I do this screening, uh, when the Come out, a lot of stocks are familiar to me, you know, and I know they are good stocks, you know. Uh, 
So now I can go further into detail lah to do it. Right. Uh, of course, screens. I, I I know. I talk to a few people as well. Like it's very subjective in that. Uh, what what criteria you want to put? Right. Some people want to have this. Some people want to pay out ratios minimum sixty percent, whatever it is. So for yourself, what are the non-negotiables when you put your screen, your the the items in your screen, right? What is a what are must-haves? Of course, dividend yield. Ah, uh, uh, dividend yield must be high enough. Ah, uh, uh, like minimum three percent. So at least it's higher than FD rate. Ah, uh, right? Then payout ratio very important. Right. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if complete payout everything, then there's no growth because I I uh, I also concerned about growth in dividend. I talk about growth. I have this uh, uh, criteria on growth. Uh, what I can do, I use five year growth. Uh, five year CAGR growth uh, for the last five years uh, on revenue, net income, dividend, right? At least positive lah. Uh, uh, at least positive growth. Uh, best is growth higher than the uh, our GDP lah. Uh, right? Uh, the better. Uh, so payout ratio growth, ROE. Mm-hmm, uh, we mm-hmm. just talk about ROE. Uh, it can be ROIC or yep. ROE. Uh, then ah uh, uh, the other thing you don't want to pay too high a price uh, ah. Just use a simple P ratio as a guide uh, That P ratio must be say less than twenty five or, or, or thirty. Make it higher uh, So that you no, know, because if this is growing company, it's uh, too strict, you, right? Sometimes ah, it's too strict. Then you know because if the company is still growing, like because when I put a criteria, I would know what is the growth of the company, uh, revenue, income for the last last few years. These are past, uh, but more important future, uh, But future we don't have, uh, So so look at the recent past, uh, So. Important uh, growth and uh, right. don't pay too high a price. But I also have this cash flow. Uh, 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 I uh. I just want to have cash flow positive. Uh, uh, but sometimes I go into more detail. I look at I go into the website. Look at the company uh, over the last five years. Uh, as I say, cash flow very lumpy. Uh, so I look at the last five years. If it's total in the last five years, uh, positive. The company is growing very fast. Uh, but the because of the company going very fast, the cash flow may not be good, you know, right? But at least I over the last five years, I must have a positive free cash flow, la. Right. So something like that, la. Right. So that's an interesting bit. So you would say that because I know some people who so this is a bit deeper, la, Like, of course, there are a lot of people don't believe in cash flow, or rather they don't look at it. Then even those that look within cash flow, some people feel that no operating cash flow is sufficient, but you seem to think that free cash flow is the key because even let's say it's high growth company, operating cash flow always positive, but free cash flow sometimes negative, sometimes positive. What do you think about this? The, the In terms of which cash flow item needs to be more emphasized? Capital expenses uh, actually is on the discussion of the management. Uh, company may earn good cash flow from operation, but some company want to spend more money for for growth, right? That is actually a good thing, lah. So it's, it's discretionary thing, lah. So, so actually, more important is, uh, I think, is cash flow from operation, lah. Right. Uh, but if the company keep on spending a lot of money on capital expenses year in year out, uh, then I a bit, a bit wary also, lah. No, I yeah, still yeah. want. I don't don't have very strict uh, free cash flow requirement, uh, but at least. Positive in the last every now and then, uh, should uh, be positive. Over the uh. last five years, at least total must be positive, uh. Uh. I, I give you an example. Uh, one of the, my favorite stock, uh, London Biscuits. Uh. Mm-hmm. I read a lot about it. London yeah. Biscuits, of course, gone bust, uh. If you look at the financial statement of uh, London Biscuits, uh, you look at the cash flow. Cash flow is very good, you know. Cash flow from operation is good. Why is it good? Because every year, the company bought a lot of. Property plant and equipment. Uh. So when you bought a lot of property plant and equipment, there's high depreciation. With high depreciation, then your cash flow is good, yeah. is it? Uh, so, except one or two years, uh, but the cash flow operation of London Biscuits has been very good, very good, you know, uh, uh, catching up with your net income. Uh. But free cash flow is always negative, uh, mm. always negative. So that is a problem. Uh. If you pay, just pay attention just to cash flow operation, uh, you might miss these things. Uh, uh. Right. Uh, same thing as the maybe like I don't know super dynamic maybe the oh same. classic maybe, yeah. maybe the same thing you know yeah ah uh, you look you uh, since you are dead uh, can yeah. you talk about it, uh, can, uh, yeah, a little can. bit uh, you, you look at uh, the 
growth of super dynamic uh, revenue, everything, and also dividend. They pay very good dividend, right? But company earn a lot of money, right? Every year, uh, pay dividend, increasing dividend. Payout ratio is very low, very low, right? But there's no 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 free cash flow. Uh. So that's that's what happened. Uh. What, mm. what happened? Uh. Uh. So these are things. If you look at free cash flow, uh, then you can avoid some of the financial sh- yeah. shenanigans. Uh, right? And of course, right. in Serba's case also is, okay, you want to sacrifice cash flow, then people always use the example of Amazon. See, they, they don't have cash flow at the first five years or whatever, so they did very well. But of course, it's what you invest in also, right? Yeah. I mean, Amazon is investing into a very high growth uh, area, but yeah. Serba is investing into those you know, construction yeah. projects, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Amazon is different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different. Right, right. So when you do your screen already, then you also mentioned just now that you want to zoom into the companies, right? So with the screen, that helps you with all the financial parts. You don't really need to see the uh, that much data anymore. What are the other things that you want to care about when you're looking at this dividend stock? I assume management is one big one. Uh. Of course, management is important, uh, right? But uh, as a as a small investor like us, uh, we, we all get a chance to meet the management and talk to them, you know. Uh, and even I mean, if you do, look, look, even if you do, how you know they're telling the 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 truth? Yeah, right? that's that's another thing. That is another thing. Also, uh, so we we as a <laughs> small investor, we don't have the opportunity uh, to talk to them and try to. Uh, know them well. Uh. Of course, you can go to what you can do. You go to annual report uh. Every year, mm. read the re- read the report. Uh, see what they what they say. Uh, and then le- and see what they do. Uh. They, do they did they do as, as they say or not? The kind of things are. Uh. But whether management is good or not, actually, a lot of things are reflected. Uh. Uh, it's reflected in, in the, the financial. financial yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, if that. the company keep on going uh, go, doing well uh, with earning cash flow, everything, uh, pay you good dividend. The, uh, you then know. they pay themselves reasonable. Ah, yeah, they pay themselves very reasonable. Right? Some of the company mm. you notice, uh, you know, like uh, like Mega First, you know, they pay very, yeah. very small pay. They uh, get. I want to get your thoughts on that actually because uh, we, I mean, we can all agree that we want the management to pay themselves fairly at, uh, you know, at a, at a minimum. But uh, because you look at a lot of data and so I want to get your sense of what is a percentage of, let's say, profit that is reasonable in your point of view uh, in terms of pay? Or do you, do, you don't think that's a fair comparison you need to compare their pays with something else to say that it's underpaid or overpaid? Well, maybe a ballpark mark is what is the revenue? Huh? Mm. So what is the percentage relative to what is the total uh, mm-hmm. uh, the director remuneration against the revenue? Right. Maybe like 3%? Huh? Maybe a good place to look at uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, if the revenue is the 100 million they only pay themselves 3 million mm-hmm. uh, well, that's reasonable yeah right you 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 revenue 100 million and then you pay yourself 10 million i think that's a bit too much la. yeah unless <laughs> your unless your yeah. net margin is yeah. uh, i don't know 60 yeah. percent why, why should they need so much money i don't know yeah. most most of these people they own 30%, 50% of the That's company. True. Do well la, in the pay company. A, pay make, dividends. Make la. a lot of money, then you pay yourself dividend, you know, your share price increase. La, you you yeah. make a lot more. La, la, what your remuneration is nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's very, very true. That's very, very yeah. true. So um, I, I think we're coming towards the the end, right? But I want to touch back again. I talked to you a lot about like what is positive and all that um, but how about the, the the big traps in that you see in dividend investors and all that of course we mentioned the high dividend you on um, what are some big traps that you think that uh, dividend investors need to look at because to give you a case right a lot of people think well dividend investing means you buy Maybank and I think that's not the right way to look at dividend investing so what are the no nos uh, what were the no nos would you say for the winning investor? Well you talk about banks, uh, you talk about banks, uh, uh Maybank. Which 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 bank is the highest dividend you pay? I believe it's Maybank. Should yeah, exactly. Seven Maybank eight percent, right? Typically. Maybank uh pay I think fifty eight percent last year. Mm. Uh 
so dividend yield about five six percent ah. Yeah. But you know, investing we we have to look at total return ah. Uh, ah, uh, total return ah. Uh, your capital gain plus your dividend yield. Ah, uh, uh, which which bank is the the highest uh, total return over the last say fifteen years? Public then, is it public bank or CMB? Okay. Uh, any other bank? Public. Hmm. Is is Afin there? Uh, the highest return uh, in the last fifteen years actually is Hong Leong Bank, you know. Uh, wow. Total return. Uh, last twenty years actually public bank. Uh, uh, last twenty years uh, total return the highest is public bank. Last fifteen years is Hong Leong Bank, you know. Uh, uh, you look at the dividend yield is actually low uh, compared with May Bank, mm. Afin Bank, uh, very low, very low, two percent, uh, maybe one percent, two percent. But but you look at the Quality of management, uh, you know, uh, the quality of the that's loan, the premium you're paying uh, for, uh, 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 right. The quality of the the loan, uh, uh, like the you talk about gross impact loan, uh, like uh, Hong Leong Bank, Public Bank is only point yeah, yeah, point yeah. something percent. Uh, when May Bank could be five percent, six percent, and then the know. cost per branch also is very yeah. low. So we got to look 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 at the the quality of the business, uh, If a company pay high dividend, but you look at the look at the business actually deteriorating, uh, They, they don't even have. They shouldn't have. They they actually don't have the ability to pay, but they still pay you. Uh, ah, yeah. Just to make the share price go up, maybe they got a lot of e-source, that kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So that is a different trap, lah. Uh, ah, uh, company right. got no. No cash flow. Uh, ah, yeah. like like Seba lah. Uh, give give you, ah, uh, four cent dividend. Ah, uh, but you know, all this year there's no, there's no free cash flow. Where do they get the money to pay? Yeah, yeah. They have to borrow. Probably. Borrow. Right issue, uh, private placement, all these things. That is a big trap, really, right? right? Yeah. No cash flow to pay dividend, uh, mm. and still yet pay dividend. Uh. Uh, those companies, I straight away, I, I don't look at. Right. It. In fact, in my book, I, I have actually give uh, some examples. Uh. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah. S- certain company pay very good dividend. Looks like very good uh, revenue growth, uh, earning growth, but you look at the cash uh, cash flow is actually poor, free cash flow. Uh, what I say is that there are so many stocks uh, to choose from. Why? Why I choose? Yeah. I why? Why should I choose? I could be wrong, lah. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think the one of the biggest trap which people seldom talk about is most people talk about. Ah, uh, you must have revenue grow. You know, earning growth. Ah, uh, yeah. you don't have revenue, earning growth. Revenue got there's a trap. That is true also. Ah, uh, that is also very important. Ah, uh. but I th- to me I think ah uh, to have the free cash flow. Uh, Free cash flow is not the cash in the balance sheet. It's the free cash flow from the audience, yeah. from the core business uh, every year to pay you. Uh, if they don't have it yeah. consistently, don't have a, uh, mm. then it's a big trap. Uh. Right, right. So uh, before we we give people the details about where they can, what they can, ex- uh, when they can expect your book to appear, you mentioned you are back in uh, I three, you know, writing and all of that. I I wanted to. Uh, Understand from your perspective why you decide to get into i3 because i3 is known to be a platform that not the most polite <laughs> and yeah. also not the most calm and rational. So mm. I was very curious why someone uh, like you decided to hop back uh, into I the battlefield. Uh, you know, I, I I only recently I write a couple of articles, uh, but, uh, uh. but I, I don't think I don't I, I don't think I want to carry on anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, last time I I, I find it that. Uh, Uh, quality a bit not so good already. Uh, uh, there are not many good articles, you know, uh, good discussion in I three. Mm. But previously, yeah, when you talk about where I get I where did I get idea? A lot of ideas I got from I three last time, sir, last mm. time. Yeah, you you, you say that that is different now. You say I three is different now. Oh, it's different. Uh, oh, yeah. you, you don't have this type of uh, uh, good articles written by you know. Uh, uh, Writer, good writer, you know, share really want to share their. Uh, actually, none already. Actually, now I find got lah. Maybe one or two lah. Uh. Yeah, but why, why do you think that is? I'm just, I'm just curious. Is it because you left? Oh, yeah, KC left. KC left. No, I not not me lah. I <laughs> uh, actually last time when I left, so uh, some people don't like don't like me lah. So yeah. I I uh, I see a lot of a lot of these things uh, I have to satisfy. You know, I have to I got to. Uh, What do you call that? Ah, uh, uh, protect. What do you call that? Ah, uh? you know when people write all kind of things, uh, I have to. You know, I have to 
protect myself or the kind of thing like I, uh, I find it very tiring. Uh. Yeah. So now I write a lot in my in my Facebook page. Uh. Yes, I noticed. Uh, I noticed. Last, last yesterday I wrote something. Uh, I I was surprised, you know. I, a lot of readers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of readers. Uh, uh, a lot of engagement also. You know. Uh, so I I think I will carry on with my. Yeah. Facebook just to share. You know lah. People like us ah, uh, we like to. Write things, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Share, you know, uh, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, before we end, when is the book coming out, and how can people get it? It's with the publisher now. Uh, final editing. Uh, okay, it should come out next month. Next Looking month. forward, yeah. we will put a link in in. We'll yeah. put a link in our comment section and description. Thank you. Okay, uh, Casey, thank you so much for coming all the way from New Zealand to come for a podcast. No, just kidding. I know you're on the way. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Nice to finally meet you in person as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you next time. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me here. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Looking forward. All right, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video slash podcast. You can listen to us on Spotify as well. And I uh, look forward to Mr. Casey's book and I will see you in the next podcast. See you.